Hey everybody, this is Kit Payne from Boston Speaks and I am super glad to be here at with Business Town today to teach you how to become a better public speaker. If you are an entrepreneur, business owner, freelancer, you are your product, you are your service, you're always in front of people, one-on-one -on -one groups, public speaking situations. Do you know how to influence others? Do you know how to sell? Do you know how to come across as professional, clear, uh, just articulate? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Let's learn how to be a better communicator, better public speaker. Let's walk through my system of how you can become a kick-ass speaker, okay? It's gonna be, it's gonna be spelled out S-P-E-A-K. So today, let's talk about first the mindset of a great public speaker. S stands for your state of mind. I'm not sure about you, but I used to be very shy. When I grew up, uh, I grew up in an Asian family. I was very hesitant to always express myself uh, as in an Asian family. We don't say I love you a lot or we don't hug a lot. So just growing up, I, I, I didn't know how to express myself. I didn't know how to speak up because in my, my state of mind, I was thinking, hmm, I didn't know what to say. And by the time I was raising my hands, the topic would have changed five times already or the class would have been over, right? So as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, what kind of a state of mind do you have when it comes to speaking in public? I'm talking about everyday situations, to going to networking events, to doing a pitch, to going out in a crowd. What kind of a mindset do you have? For example, if you are in a networking group and everyone has to introduce themselves one by one, one by one, one by one, you might be thinking, holy crap. I have to maybe speak pretty soon. And that energy, right, that, that maybe that fear that you have of public speaking might be building up. How can you put yourself in a better state in that mood, right? So if, for example, you feel like, holy crap, I have to go up and speak, or holy crap, I have to talk about myself, or I have to pitch about myself, you might be thinking, I might be nervous, or you could also be thinking, how can I pump myself up to be the best that I can be, right? We have this energy inside of us. We can also call this butterflies in the stomach. But how can you turn these butterflies and make them synchronize and attack what you have to give? There was a study done at Harvard. They would split up 50, 50, uh, 100 people, 50 people before they gave a talk. They would ask, you know, they would say to them, hmm, can you, you know, just take a breath, calm down. And the other 50 people, they were like Tony Robbins style. Hey, can you, hey, motivate them, motivational music. Hey, you're gonna do amazing. And here's what they found out. The people that were more motivated, okay, they were more engaging to the audience. So as an entrepreneur, as a speaker, how can you put yourself in the best mindset? I'm not saying don't breathe and don't calm yourself down, but can you put yourself in a better mindset so when you go up there, you're gonna say, hey, I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna give as much value to my audience. If, for example, if you're pitching, right, it's the confidence that's gonna gain over the in investor. I'm not sure if you have ever seen anyone who gave a pitch before, and they have tons of experience, tons and years of experience, but when they go up on stage and they feel nervous and they don't know what to say, and they, you know, they fumble with their hands, uh, you know, they think they're nervous. It sounds like they have done nothing at all. But if you have someone that comes with confidence and just say, hey, my name is so-and-so, and I want you to do this, and I want to help you with this, that confidence will just gain everything over. So how can you put yourself in the best mindset? One last example, if you are a basketball player going to a championship game, okay, will you be thinking, when you go there, I can't shoot that free throw? I can't shoot that free throw. Or will you be on the bus listening to motivational music, pumping yourself up to go to the game? So as an entrepreneur, as a regular person, the next time you have to get into a public speaking situation, whether if it's one-on-one -on -one with someone in a group setting or really in front of hundreds of people, how can you put yourself in the best state of mind? I just have to tell you, I'm super excited about this part. We're gonna talk about posture and we're gonna talk about body language and this is one of my favorite parts because every single time I teach a workshop every single time I teach my audience this is their favorite parts okay we're gonna talk about body language hacks that you can use to engage to inspire and to captivate your audience every single time when you do these things it just works the first one I'm gonna do is something like this no matter what I say 
I'm gonna sound a little bit more intelligent just by putting my hands together like this. And if you don't know what to do with your hands, and you just say, hey, what should I do with my hands? You know, think of this as an intelligent pose. Now, the next one, if you wanna be more open and friendly, here's what you can do. You can, palms up, point to your audience with your palms up, right? This is an opening, inviting posture. Say, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? You can do it one hand, you can do it two hands, you can keep on gesturing over and over and over again. So each person, no matter what you're doing with this, no matter what you're saying, you can be saying apples, bananas, strawberries, pineapple, pancakes, right? Now here's the key thing, you have to look at your audience member and point at them at the same time because visually, they will get engaged because they're thinking, what is this guy or this, you know, this woman pointing at me for or gesturing at me? Visually, they will get engaged and you will feel like you are welcoming them with this posture. The E actually stands for eyes. So you have P for posture, E for eyes. What you want to do really just quickly, try to engage people in the eyes for five seconds. Look at them in the eyes visually. You know, if, you, if you can connect with one person, treat it like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And if you're looking on video right now, how do you feel when I do this? Do you feel like I want to ask you something, right? What do you think about this, right? Do you like what I'm saying right now? Or do I sound like I know what I'm talking about? Now, if you want to be more firm, all you have to do, it's one of my favorite ones too, if you want to be more firm, you don't have to change your pitch, change your voice, is you have to do this, right? Just this. Can you go to the grocery store today and get some bananas, apples, and strawberries? Hey, look, our meeting is at one. No, wait, we just changed it to two. Can you meet me at this place at this time? So you can go down, boom, 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 or you can go up, one, two, three. So you have all these different things to work on. The good thing about body language is you can do this. If you want to memorize your talks, if you want to make your talk more engaging, you can make these as cues, right? So if you want to begin, right, you can start an intro just like this, right? Maybe your second paragraph, I want to talk about this, and this is why you should listen. So maybe the third paragraph, what do you all think about this? So you can point, you can gesture. Again, this is more friendly, welcoming, more firm, and more intelligent. I'm gonna leave you with those three today because there's, that's a lot already, but there's something called the box. Normally, in a conversation, our hands will usually go like this, right? Now, you can try to do the same thing. Keep your hands in the box when you're just speaking because normally we wanna say in public, this is just a normal conversation, so you can keep your hands within the box. Now, when you bring your hands outside of the box, that's gonna draw people there because they're saying, hey, today I wanna to talk to you about my product A. So when you put your hands outside the box, visually you'll engage more people and they'll say, hey, he's, he or she is doing something different now because the hands are just out. Now, I'm not saying you, can, you can't put your hands out like this all the time. If you do put your hands out like this all the time, you're just gonna be a lot more, you're gonna seem a lot more energetic. There's a difference between me going like this and going like this, right? If I keep my hands like this, you can think of like Tony Robbins, he's gonna come up to the table, ah, do this, do this, do all this, right? So you can just change it around. What do you think is the most honest part of your body? Okay, the most honest part of your body. It's not your eyes, okay, it's not your wrist, it's your feet. Have you ever talked with someone and their feet is facing the door? Okay, that probably means they wanna go. The thing about this with public speaking, is usually when we speak in public, or when we speak to someone, we turn our bodies like this. We might be talking to them, but we're still turning our bodies to them. Our feet are usually still facing one way. If you wanna engage people that much more, okay? I'm gonna, look, my feet is facing that way right now. If I wanna engage people that much more, all I have to do is turn my feet to that person or to you. So again, if I'm turning my feet right now, right? Because when you turn your feet directly to that person, you're saying to that person, I'm giving you all my attention. Here's one last thing I'm gonna give you. Now, most people when they, when they speak in public, they stand like this and they're up straight, right? All you have to do, if you wanna engage them that much more, lean in a little bit, right? How do you feel right now when I lean in, right? Maybe you wanna engage them that much more, you can captivate them that much more. And 
uh, one main difference between male and female, most males, they tend to stand like this with their feet. I don't know why, it's like, a, like, the, like penguins. Uh, not saying that we all, no, we all do this, but females tend to shift your hips a little bit more. You might go to one place, right? And you just get comfortable and you shift your hips. So if you want to be a better public speaker, work on your posture and know how to control your body language. There's nothing wrong with putting your hands down, but if you know how to control your body language and do something like this or like this, then you have total control and you can be a better public speaker. We talked about body language. We talked about your state of mind. Let's talk about vocal variety. Visually, you can engage people, but when people hear your words, you can engage them because of what they can hear. But the A and S-P-E-A-K stands for enunciation. But think of this as vocal variety. Just like body language hacks, vocal variety will help engage people that much more because they can hear the things that you say and if you vary it, they will be just captivated because it's not your body moving anymore, it's what they can hear. Think of how slow, think of how fast, think of how soft, think of how loud you can get. Think of down and up and to the left and to the right, basically. So when you talk softer, you can, you know, you can whisper. Now, you can even say it louder. Now, even if I do such things like this, you might want to pay attention more. Now, if I'm speaking a little bit slower, it might sound like what I'm gonna say next might be more important because they're waiting for it, right? Now, if you speak a little bit faster, let's say up. If you're going faster, I may compel you a little bit more because I'm really, really interested. I love what I'm saying. I just want to teach you all, all my information and you're just waiting and waiting. You know, you're on the seat, you know, the edge of your chairs and you're listening to it. But as a good speaker, you have to know how to go fast to slow. Sometimes when people, they think of, they want to emphasize words, they just think of, I have to speak louder. But think of speaking longer. You're words will come out more smooth. So if you want to sound like a more smooth talker, just expand it and make it longer. To practice your vocal variety, how can you in a one-on-one -on -one normal every single day situation, you know, maybe you can whisper to someone. You don't whisper to anyone anymore. How can you speed things up? The power is in knowing how to speed it up, slow it down, say it louder, say it softer, and to play around with your voice. When you are in the presence of someone who loves what they're talking about, their body language and their vocal variety is so normal and is so engaging already, that's when the content comes across. Everything is just so normal to me. Everything will seem normal to you because they, they just love what they're talking about. The best exercise that you can practice today, it's gonna take only 20 seconds if you want it to, is this. This will help you hone down on your body language, your state of mind, and your vocal variety. All we're gonna do, okay, or all you're gonna do is count up to 20. Okay, you ready for this? You're gonna count up to 20. I'm gonna demonstrate for you. Now, speed things up, slow things down, you use your body language. Okay, hit. I'm gonna go for it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Nineteen, twenty. Right? We're just counting up to 20. So if you want to practice being a better public speaking speaker with your style and delivery, practice that exercise. Okay, you all might be waiting for this part because most people when they think about public speaking or speaking in general, they think about, I don't know what to say. Uh, how do I be inspiring? How do I engage people? Uh, what's the best way to organize my talk? Let's talk about content. So we have S, that stands for state. P stands for posture. E stands for eyes. A stands for enunciation or vocal variety. Okay, don't hate me for this. K stands for connection. Okay, K stands for connection. I, don't you love that? I like it. Okay, I had to make up something. So the K stands for connection. So I gave you body language hacks, vocal variety hacks. Let's talk about content creation hacks. When I first began learning about communication, uh, about persuasion, about influence, uh, reading about all these books, and almost every great communication book, there is always a, a section on ethics. 
because when they teach you about communication, because when they teach you about persuasion and influence, uh, you have to use it for, you know, not the worst, but for better. You don't want to be like Hitler and be like, hmm, okay? I always used to skip over the ethics section because it's really important and this stuff works. And the thing about content creation and getting people persuaded or you know, convinced or just inspired, when we hear these things, these are more concepts we're gonna work on because I cannot help you create your own content. I can help you understand how we can connect with people every single time. And when we are in a presence of a great speaker, their mindset will set you on fire. The stories that they tell every single time will hook you. And when we are in the middle of that, we can't understand why we're so engaged. It just happens. But when we're speaking about it, you're just gonna say, hey, that is so simple. So if you really wanna connect with people, and now I'm talking, more, I'm talking more about content, okay? Not style and delivery, everything on content. You want to talk to the head, and you want to talk to the heart. So, have you ever been in a presentation where it's just logic, 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 facts, facts, facts? There's nothing wrong with that. They're giving you a lot of information, a lot of facts, a lot of details. You might be thinking to yourself, this is boring. It's just going over your head, right? It's not connecting with you because it's so boring. Now, that's one side of it. If, if you're giving a lot of uh, logic, a lot of details, a lot of facts, you're talking directly to the head. Now, this is the extreme cases. Now, if you're one of these people, you just talk to the heart, you're telling stories all the time. Okay, I found $5 yesterday, I found it today. Here's what I did this morning. You can go on and on and on and on and forever, and people are gonna think, what's your point? So, you wanna talk to the head, and you wanna talk to the heart. So, here's basically what I mean. Okay, I'm gonna, um, I'm also gonna talk a little bit about impromptu speaking, this will tie in with that. Most people think of, when they think of impromptu speaking, hmm, I don't know what to say. And the flip side of that is there's someone who's always talking for too long. Maybe you want to be right in the middle, right? So use this method. It's called the PrEP method. The P stands for point. The R stands for reason. The E stands for example. And the P again goes back to the point. Okay, use this as a foundation. So here's what I mean by foundation. I'm not sure if you know, but I used to be a hip hop dancer. I used to street perform out in Boston. So in Boston, okay, I used to always do the robot. Boom, okay, boom. That's a foundation. This pop, boom, right? That's a foundation. If I can understand, boom, 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 how to do that pop, I can do it any way I want. So how does this relate with public speaking? If you have no clue what to talk about, Prep, for example, is a foundation that you can master. I'm also, you know, different foundations are like um, yeah, uh, pros, cons, and here's what I think. So if someone gives you a topic, what do you think about the iPhone? Here's what I like, here's what I don't like, here's what I think about it. But prep is the best one uh, because it connects to the head and it connects to the heart. And at the same time, if you have these foundations, right? If you have these foundations, you will not go on forever and ever and ever. So here's how prep works. If I want to talk about iPhone, okay? The point is iPhone is an amazing technology. The reason is it's because it can help people connect just like that if they're in Europe or they're here in Boston. For example, the other day, I was chatting with my friend, but with an iPhone, all we had to do is say, hey, you know, do you wanna go on FaceTime? Do you wanna go on Skype? Do you wanna video chat? And we were on just like that. That is why iPhones are such an amazing technology, okay? So point, iPhone's amazing technology, Here's the reason, because it can connect people. Stories, there are three types of stories that you can connect to the heart. There's personal stories, there's a story you can tell about a friend, and case studies, so three different types of stories. And at the end of the prep, you wanna wrap it back up with the point, right? iPhone is an amazing technology, because sometimes you don't know what you're talking about, you forget what you're talking about, and the people listening to the other side don't even know what you're talking about, and they forget your whole point at the end, right? If you wanna connect with people, talk to the heart, talk to the head, and here's what research says. They analyzed Martin Luther King, Obama, all the great talks uh, in history. 65% is on emotional appeal. 25% is on logical appeal. 
and 10% uh, credibility. All you have to do, look, I might be credible now, that's why you might be listening to me. Now, you need credibility because why should you listen to me than someone else that just came off the street, right? You just have to prove it just like that. But if you want to really engage people, hit them with the emotional side, and then you also have to provide a reason. So take that prep method, use it in wherever you go. If you have to give a pitch, give a pitch. If you're in a job interview and they ask you a question, go over that every single time. Have your point, have your reason, have your example, have your point, talk to the head, talk to the heart. That's one of the key things about content because when you talk about content, you want to really engage with your audience and just build that connection. So if you want to be a better public speaker, S stands for state, P stands for posture, E stands for eyes, A stands for enunciation or vocal variety, and the K stands for connection. So you have the style and delivery and you have the content. How can you make people fall in love with you by building that connection? I just want to say thank you very much. If you want to be a better public speaker, hone this down. Count up to 20, right? Just do it right now. You could have done it right now, right? And then work on the prep method, one-on-one -on -one in a group in a public speaking situation. So if you want to be a better public speaker, really just change your mindset. Just speak wherever, everywhere you go every single day. I just want to say thank you uh, for watching today. I, I hope that you gained a lot today. Uh, go on YouTube, go on Google, just type in public speaking, speaking, all the information is there. Just keep on working at it. And I'm going to say too, go and watch all the other Business Town videos. There's a lot of, there's tons of information. You can just get lost for hours and hours and hours. Check them out because if you want to keep on growing, if you want to just keep on uh, learning, this is one of the best ways to learn. Through video, right? You, might, you can even come talk on Business Town too, right? Get that knowledge and just teach it. So, thank you for tuning in today. Again, my name is Kit Pang from Boston Speaks. Thank you so much.